That is all that I want to say about this book because I don't want to think about it ever again. Please spend your time wisely and pick up something else. But the romances and the characters are toxic as fuck. Okay, let's make it a little bit more cozy here on this blue Monday, shall we? Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. My last upload was my best reads of 2022, meaning the only next possible upload would be my worst reads of 2022. Of course, little disclaimer, we all have our own opinions. So if some of your favorite reads are actually in this pile, then I'm sorry, but this is just my opinion. We all have opinions and let's just kind of like make fun of these books for the sake of it, for the fun of it. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Before I really get into this list of my actual worst reads, I also have some honorable or dishonorable mentions. <laughs> These were books that were really quite disappointing to me or that I basically just did not finish and they deserve this spot on the list sort of. So the first one that I wanna mention is Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnett, if I'm saying that correctly for my memory, which isn't that great, so I might be wrong. I picked this up at the beginning of 2022 because I wanted to make like a reading booktubers underrated faves and I never continued on with that video. I did actually read two underrated faves. That's besides the point. This book had been on my TBR for years because I once received it in a fairy loot box and it is a young adult fantasy with dragons and the world was all very dark. I don't even really remember what the synopsis was so you can check it out here if you want to because I don't remember it anymore because it was so boring. The initial like 100 pages really quite intrigued me because I wanted to know more about this world with these like malicious dragons in it and how like the political system worked. I think our main character also had to interact with one of her like enemies. You know, it's stuff like that that always intrigues me a lot. But after a while, it just got very boring and the plot moved super slowly. And I was in this mindset of if I don't like it, if I don't want to keep on reading a book and it really takes me a lot of effort to pick one up, I am DNFing it. And that's the kind of spirit that I wanted to have in 2022. So I was bored. Dishonorable mention number one out of the way. Dishonorable mention number two is Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I adored Rock, Paper, Scissors by her. One of my favorite thrillers, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. Such big cliffhangers at every single chapter. And the plot twist, amazing. Read that one. I think that's one of my 2021 favorites. But Daisy Darker, I actually received an arc for this book. I was so excited about that. Basically our main character's grandma has always kind of like predicted that she would die on her 80th birthday. And now the whole family is coming together to this really dark and gloomy tiny island off of the coast of England. And when they come together to celebrate her birthday, grandma actually passes away. And like the whole family is kind of like trying to figure out what happens, but the island that they're on gets cut off from the mainland and, um, they're, the killer is in the family, they're around. That premise I think sounds very dark and creepy and I overall liked it, but eventually the explanation of what was going on with this story, I'm not gonna spoil it, was a bit of a letdown and I kind of started to predict it from the midpoint on. And you know, I wanted to be surprised. I wanted to be blown out of my mind like rock, paper, scissors did and that just didn't happen. I thought it was gonna be a new favorite and it was a three star read. Disappointing. And the same goes for Terry Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I thought that this was gonna be a new favorite because until so far, I have loved every single book that I read by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This one felt super repetitive. We follow Carrie Soto, who is like this amazing tennis player. She has won somewhere in the twenties, like grand slams, but someone is coming for her record and she just, she doesn't want her record to be taken, okay? And you get told time and time again what a badass bitch Carrie Soto is and that she will not let anyone hold her from reaching her goals. Like, it's clear. Carrie Soto is fearless. And my main problem with the book is that the first 70 and last 70 pages felt like that Taylor Jenkins read that I wanted. And then the 200 pages in the middle were all the same. Training for the tennis matches, going to tennis matches, failing, winning, and Carrie Soto just trying to ban people out of her life because she just has commitment issues. Just a no for me, a little bit. I can't see why people would love it, but also I don't really have a connection with tennis. And I think that if you are not not passionate about tennis at all or sports in general, maybe this this is a skippable read. And now let's go on to my actual worst reads of 2022. Let's see how many I have on the list. I have six and they're gonna be from like least worst to worst 
kind of. They're all very close to one another because I think I gave them all like one and a half to two out of five stars. Yeah. Yeah, that they're, they're just not great. Overall, 2022 was not an amazing reading year. Hoping 2023 will be a better one. Starting off with my least worst, but still kind of a worst read. And that is Dark and Shallow Lies by Ginny Myers Sane. With a lot of these books, the premises sounded amazing, but the execution just wasn't top notch. Basically with this story, it takes place in La Cachette, Louisiana, which is like a swamp place. It's kind of like a very touristy town that a lot of people visit because it's all on the swamp, the houses, the stores, and it's kind of like, like an isolated place. So the vibes are absolutely there. Like the ambiance was great. On the back, it also says this tiny town where 17 year old Gray spends her summers is the self proclaimed psychic capital of the world. All these characters that live at La Cachette, they have like these supernatural powers. Like you have people who can mind read, who can kind of like control the weather. And you have many other really interesting magical things that people can do. However, her best friend, Alora has been missing for six months and like nobody has been able to find her or her body. And Gray is basically trying to find where the hell her best friend is. When a mysterious stranger emerges from the bayou, a stormy eyed boy with links to Alora and the town's bloody history, Gray realizes that La Cachette's past is far more present and dangerous than she'd ever understood. I really quite liked the audiobook. That was a plus, but besides the beginning really intriguing me, it just became so boring. The characters made the most stupid decisions. <laughs> it was also very slow moving. And I just wanted more backstory with like these teenagers who were all born around like the same time they supposedly had like this special connection, but you never got to see that and feel that kind of community sense. I don't know. There was just so much potential and the ending just felt rushed. And also I just didn't care to know anymore. On number five, I have The Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael. If you've seen my latest like reading vlog, which was a perfect wintry vlog, honestly, it was very cozy. You should definitely check it out if you haven't already. I thought telling from like the cover and the synopsis on the back, this would be perfect to read during the winter times. Basically you follow Art and her mom has been taken because this story takes place in Scotland in the 1600s and there are all of these like witch huntings and basically Art is trying to save her mother. You were promised a great adventure with just magical forests in the background. And what did you get? Just a story that fell completely flat. The storyline and the characters, I did not feel any connection to both of them. And I honestly didn't care what was gonna happen to Art or whether or not she would find her mother back. <laughs> the characters that Art meets along the way, just their conversations felt so unnatural, so artificial and every single step that you get further into this adventure, it just felt more and more convenient. And the writing is nothing special as well. I am so sad that I didn't love this. Please spend your time wisely and pick up something else. I was doubting whether the next two books should actually be in my top three. And this is gonna shock some people or will upset some people maybe. And that is the Hawthorne Legacy and the Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I am honestly shocked that these are on the list because I absolutely adored the Inheritance Games. And this one was actually on my top reads of 2022 list. Avery basically has nothing. Her sister takes care of her because her parents are not in the picture. And all of a sudden she inherits billions from this billionaire who actually has a ton of family members who could have inherited the money, but for some reason, they haven't. The only like little rule to this inheritance is that Avery needs to stay with the family for at least a year and like live in their house while solving all of these riddles that this billionaire left behind as to why is it Avery who gets all this money? Book one felt super entertaining. I loved getting to know all the characters. There's also like this huge subplot of romance. There's a love triangle, which did not bother me in book one, which was special, but <laughs> was that subplot the main plot of these two books and did the triangle annoy me? Heck yeah. <laughs> I could not care less for any of the characters in these two books. Also, it felt way less clever than book one, especially the Hawthorne legacy gives zero answers to anything that happens in book one, which is not something that you want. You want at least some kind of answers. And at the end of book two, beginning of book three, there's like this random villain kind of entered in the story. A lot of people actually commented on some of my previous videos that this was supposed to be a duology. And I feel like that might've worked 
a little bit better. But how intriguing and mysterious book one was, it just was not that in books two and three. I mean, I get why people love it. It's very entertaining. The writing style is super fast paced because despite me absolutely just like not loving and not being interested in the story 100 pages into the Hawthorne legacy, I did finish the book and I did buy the third one. I don't know why. <laughs> Apparently for some reason, I just wanted to like finish this series for the sake of finishing the series. I mean, if you're not bothered by the things that I just mentioned, go you, I'm so happy for you. But if you are or suspect that you might be, just read book one and then maybe just like read the synopses of books two and three somewhere online. I'm so sad <laughs> because I love book one so much. I feel so frustrated. <laughs> so let's get to my top three worst reads. And on number three, I have The Society for Soulless Girls by Laura Stephen. Back in like 2018, 2019, 19, the exact opposite of okay which is laura stevens like contemporary duology i love that book so much i'm very curious that if i would give it a reread right now whether i'd still love it as much as back then and the society for soulless girls wants to be a dark academia magical murder mystery and it just absolutely wasn't. The back, like the synopsis intrigued me so much. You have four dead students. 10 years ago, four teenagers lost their lives in the North Tower murders at the elite Carvel College of Arts, forcing the university to close its doors and the case to go cold. I mean, you already got me hooked and intrigued. Two haunted girls. Now Carvel is reopening and fearless student Lottie is determined to find out what really happened. But when her roommate, Alice, stumbles upon a soul splitting ritual hidden in the library and the North Tower, claims another victim, time starts running out. One chilling secret to destroy them all. Can Lottie and Alice uncover the truth before the centuries old curse consumes them both? Sounds good, right? Was it good? No. <laughs> Again, everything that we are promised from the synopsis just fell flat. I cannot name a single side character that I enjoyed reading from, but especially our two main characters. Like they're supposed to be like a grumpy sunshine romance as well. And I cannot remember, I think it was Alice who was actually like the extremely grumpy one. She just, she felt toxic. Why would Lottie even want to be friends with Alice? And then Lottie was the overcompensating happy person. I mean, I kind of feel like this might be reminiscent of Wednesday and Enid from the show Wednesday. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe take it to the extreme, but it kind of feels similar to that. However, Wednesday and Enid work and Alice and Lottie just don't. But I did not ship the romance. I felt like there was absolutely no chemistry. Like maybe friendship might be barely there. Also the murder mystery, you get so little clues throughout this like 450 page story. And in the end, it kind of just gets wrapped up through dialogue only, which is so anticlimactic. And that whole society ID that intrigued me in the beginning, I just couldn't care less at the end to learn more about this supposed society. It's too long for what the story is. It could have absolutely been at least like a hundred pages shorter. I've said it multiple times in previous videos. It just felt as if Laura Steven was checking off the dark academia box boxes and thought, now I have created the perfect dark academia book. That's not how it works, unfortunately. On number two, another murder mystery, and that is All These Bodies by Kendar Blake. And I mostly dislike this book because it felt like it was marketed as a murder mystery, whilst in reality, it is a paranormal book. The explanation of why these murders have been going on and what is actually going on felt like a complete cop-out to me. And I think in the end, it still didn't even make any sense. And I did not feel like the story was nicely wrapped up. Basically, there are like, I think over 10 murders that take place in this little town in the 1950s in somewhere in America. And we basically have our main character who is a teenage boy who will be interviewing the only like clue to the crime scene. Basically this girl was present at the crime scene and she was completely covered in the victim's blood. And our boy main character tries to interview her, see what was actually going on. And then you have that giant supernatural paranormal element that I don't want to spoil, but it's just bad. You basically don't get to know anything throughout these interviews. It just feels kind of like pointless whilst I want clues to what is going on. I cannot say it in any other way. It was just shit. But not as bad as number one, which is Confess by Colleen Hoover. I made a whole dedicated reading vlog to reading TikTok romances. That also gave me one of my favorite reads of the year actually, but it also gave me the worst. The thing is I also work at a bookstore. I work at Bruce in Utrecht where I study, where I have my dorm. 
where I live. And I see so many young girls come in with Colleen Hoover says books. And I kind of get it because when I was 16, which is almost eight years ago, by the way, oh my God, okay. And I read some of her books, I was obsessed. Maybe now, ah, so good. <laughs> Ugly Love, a masterpiece. It ends with us, tears were flowing down my face and I was thanking Colleen Hoover for it. And this year I was like, I have a Colleen Hoover book on my shelves left from back in the day, AKA confess, let's give it a go and see what the hype is about. Would it still be good in my eyes, in my opinion right now? And the answer that I can give you with 100% certainty is no. It's actually one of the worst books that I read and I get it. I get why people are obsessed with her. Her writing style is super quick and addictive, but the romances and the characters are toxic as f Auburn Reed is determined to rebuild her shattered life and she has no room for mistakes. But when she walks into a Dallas art studio in search of a job, she doesn't expect to become deeply attracted. I cannot even read this seriously. <laughs> to the studio's enigmatic artist, Owen Gentry. For once, Auburn takes a chance and puts her heart in control only to discover that Owen is hiding a huge secret. The magnitude of his past threatens to destroy everything Auburn loves most. And the only way to get her life back on track is to cut Owen out of it. But can she do it? Can she? <laughs> Will we find out in this book? I'm sorry, I just I just cannot stop making fun of it because this romance is everything but romantic. It is toxic. Owen is a freaking stalker because when you find out the big huge secret that he has been keeping from Auburn all while they are having this relationship, I don't even remember if he actually tells it to her. I think he does. He has basically, without giving away too much, he has basically just been stalking Auburn ever since he not really, but kind of met her a couple of years back. And he kind of made a promise to himself that he would date this girl. That's, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> not amazing. Also, I absolutely despised Auburn's roommate. There is also like a rape scene in this book, which is kind of used to move the plot forward instead of starting an actual conversation that would contribute, I don't know, just something <laughs> of substance in this book. Colleen Hoover just writes super problematic romantic relationship. And she also very problematically uses these huge themes such as like domestic violence and it ends with us and then rape in this book. And she just doesn't discuss it. She uses it to forward the plot and it just, yeah, I just, no, I don't like it. And every single time that someone comes into the bookstore and wants to, you know, pay for a Colleen Hoover book, I'm always like, oh, okay. Um, but have you read Emily Henry? <laughs> I just want to push a different recommendation onto them as well, because yeah, there are way better authors than Colleen Hoover. I mean, I'm glad that people are reading books and that Colleen Hoover is getting them into reading, but I do hope that after years of reading, they realize that that her work is just not it. And that is all that I wanna say about this book because I don't wanna think about it ever again. And those were the six books, nine if you count the dishonorable mentions, that were actually the worst books that I read in the past year. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree with some of my opinions on these books, maybe you disagree, let me know in the comments down below as well as your worst reads of this past year because I'm very curious. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.